Hey everyone, this month I am bringing you the old bridge. Sorry it is a little late, as I've explained I think on Patreon and Discord. There was an error in Foundry which was kind of upsetting my testing and uh, preparation in Foundry. But the latest, latest build, 307, seems to have resolved the issue. Uh, the scene this release is called the old bridge. You can see it in, in front of you now. The map size is 35 by 30. There's a few variations that can be used for the bridge itself, as well as some of the surrounding areas, both beneath and around the bridge. If we go over to our levels button here in the corner, you can see that there are two levels, the river bed, which includes the underbridge area, as well as the ground level up above. So right now I essentially have everything turned off for the ground level, and that's where I'll start. So I've divided this into two main control panels. That in the left margin is for the ground level, so um, the level you see right now, and those in the right margin are for the riverbed options. So I'm gonna start with the ground level, just quickly run over what you can do here. In the left margin, the first option shown is the toll station, so currently it is set to off, which shows none. If you click the on for active, it gives you an active toll station somewhere where guards might be registering anyone who crosses, might be taking a toll from people who want to cross, or otherwise just providing some sort of administrative or guard duty here. I've also provided an abandoned option for the same thing, so the toll station is kind of ruined, it's been left abandoned, um, things are broken, it's messy. I've done the same thing for just below here, uh, where there's a guard camp, it can be used as any other camp. I've tried to keep it pretty generic, but if you turn it on, you can see there's kind of an active guard camp here. If you go to the abandoned version, it's like there was a camp there, but no one is there anymore. And then if you just turn it off, again, it's just open grassland. You can add statues to the bridge if you want to give it a bit more pizzazz. You can turn those on and off pretty quickly. Next are the barricades. So you can add barricades to the left. These also add invisible walls that you cannot walk through. The wall tool, see the invisible walls there. And you can also just turn them off and they can also be added to the right side if you just click those on you can now see them on the right you can turn them off on that side as well so then they're gone and then lastly we have these banners which kind of puts a frame of banners over top of the bridge so if you turn the banners on banners here they're red with a bit of gold writing on them you can change it to bunting if it's more of like a festival atmosphere or tattered that kind of goes with the abandoned options for the guards these will appear as overhead tiles, so if you place a token down, they will just simply walk underneath both the shadow and the banner frame itself. And if you turn them off, all the walls disappear. Same with the statues. I'll just demonstrate that quickly. Turn the statues off. I think it's this one. Yeah. Then the walls that were with the statues are gone as well. Regarding the banners, you can also put them on on the right side, which is just over at the other end of the bridge. And then lastly, here on the left margin, we have the options for the bridge itself. So right now it is turned on to just the plain stone bridge. This is kind of when it's in good repair still. You can change it to broken. Also, there's a repaired version where it's been broken and now people ha have kind of put boards over there so they can still cross over this bridge. The last option for the bridge is the drawbridge. So you can either have the drawbridge up or down. That controls these two top buttons control both sides at once. And then if you want to control either side of the bridge, you can use the down buttons. Now, I didn't put in interaction points for this bridge on purpose, because really it would require a set of two people to raise and lower the bridge on each side. For the complications that it would have been necessary to do that via interaction points, I thought it was just simpler to have this run by the GM and they can decide when they want to lower either side of the bridge and if PCs are doing it, you can just role play that and say, okay, one of you go to each side and then you can just click it down. So as far as the bridge goes, I kind of tried to make this into kind of life cycle of the bridge. So originally it was just a stone bridge. Maybe it's abandoned and not used for a while, maybe some construction errors and it could become broken. And then people still want to use the bridge. It's kind of put these boards on as a makeshift crossing still. And then when the government or the local authorities decide they want to fix the bridge, um, building it in stone is too hard, so they maybe repair it with this drawbridge. So that's kind of the idea there. You could start with the stone bridge. Maybe there's a big battle here. The bridge gets destroyed. 
then because the bridge is broken, it becomes abandoned, so they can use the abandoned toll station as well as the tattered banners. There's no one using it. No one is using it anymore. And then when the drawbridge is put on, maybe these become fixed again and you can use the active variations. If we go down to the riverbed, there's a few customization options here. Firstly, we have the water level, so you can have it it's set to low right now. You can put it to high, where essentially the water just kind of fills up another layer. Um, and then you can also have it set to none if there's a drought or whatever else reason you want to have this without water. Beneath the bridge, there are these underbridge areas located here. You can put it to empty first, just to show you that there would be an area under the bridge where tokens could move to. There's a basic camp, which could be used for pretty much anybody, humans, monsters, bandits. Uh, then camp two is more adventurers or other people who have decided to live under the bridge. Next, there's a hidden chest. So in case there was some, somebody hid something down here for someone to pick up later. Also stash goods. So if there are bandits guarding, guarding this bridge, perhaps this is where they stash the goods that they've been stealing from the passengers or the tolls they've been collecting from travelers crossing their bridge and then lastly you can turn it off and have nothing again and the last option here is that add a floating body to the river so if you turn that on you can see there's a floating body kind of underneath the bridge it consists of two tiles a water tile to make him look like he's floating and then just the body tile underneath i place it here on purpose a if you want to have the regular bridge the body will be hidden and the players will have to come under here to see the dead body and find it. Two, if you go to something like the broken variation of the bridge, you can now see the body floating under there. So maybe the bridge breaks when the players are here and this person falls in. You can turn on the, the body down here. Another reason you might want to use it is in case players push somebody into the river. You can see their body on the bottom afterwards if you want. As always, I have placed the button for the journal in the top left corner. It goes over all the options for each level. In the riverbed level, I have added these green drawings. Using the drawing tool, these are levels, elevation changes. So the ones that are highlighted more darkly are the stairs. So players entering that square will climb up and down the riverbank. Whereas the hashed ones that are more faded those are down only, so players can only go down in those locations. I'll give you an example here, just move this token. If he enters the square, he goes down, but entering the hashed areas does not let him go up. However, if he enters the hashed area from the top, he does descend. Now, if you want to have it so that these are all stairs that can go up and down a boat because it is just a riverbank. You can go to your drawing tools, the riverbed level, you can select it, which one you want to change to a stair, and instead of a stair one way down, you can change it to a regular stair, which will take them up and down between those two elevations. If you don't want to change the stair level itself, but you do want to change the elevation, you can right click on the token and then just manually enter in the new elevation you want them to be at. So zero, now they're back up to the top, and these will still take them down. You might be able to hear behind my voice a bit the sound of running water. That's because I've also added in these ambient sound beacons for water on both the ground and riverbed levels. Then if you decide to use some of the underbridge areas, you can see if you use the basic camp, the light beacon is turned on. If you go to the hidden chest where there is no light, the light beacon is turned off. So walls, lights, sounds, um, there, well, there aren't any sounds in this one, but walls and lights all update along with the images when you select the appropriate option. I will note here that if you do want to use the high water option, it does not work with the underbridge areas unless you want to have them under the water tiles. So just be aware that these underwater underbridge areas generally only work with the low water option. All right, that kind of brings me to the end of the video. I'm trying to do a quick one this time so that um, I can get it out to you a bit quicker because I know it's already a bit late. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you run into any issues or if there's anything you'd like to see. I'll be posting another video soon. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.